this is Ryan over at Peer Pressure by Agrify. Today we're going to be washing some hemp on the Axis trichome separator. People have been separating trichomes from the plant material to make hash for centuries, but the usage of water in trichome separation is pretty recent revolution. Bubble hash, also known as ice water hash, was developed in the 1980s. It's arguably the best way to preserve the flavor, terpene profiles, and cannabinoids of the cannabis you're using. Ice water hash is also the starting material for live rosin, diamonds, sauce, batter, jam, sap, and solventless vaporizer cartridges, all of which command high prices. Due to this, it's important to start with high quality biomass, or as we like to say, fire in equals fire out. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the washing process with hemp. Yeah, I know, people usually don't wash hemp, but we can't wash cannabis and we can wash hemp here. So we figured we'd give it a try and see what happens, because I truly have no idea. For this hemp washing operation, I'm using the Axis trichome separator. For filtration, I'm using the Peer Pressure's commercial hash washing filtration package. We're gonna be using about 45 to 50 gallons of water, about 3,000 grams of dry hemp, and about 25 pounds of ice. Now the amount of ice that we're putting in the vessel is directly correlated to how cold the room is and how cold the RO is as well. You actually don't need a lot of ice for your wash if you have a cold environment and a cold RO. The ice is just acting to chill the water. It's not actually being used to shear the uh, trikes off of the plant. Um, a lot of the times when people think about ice water hash, they think that ice is the most important part of the process when essentially it's not. Um, when the water is cold enough, the trikes become so brittle that they fall off almost instantly. You just need the water flowing through the, uh, the flour. You don't need the ice to shear it off. I'm actually going to be melting most of this ice before I even go to fill the vessel with our starting material. I'm going to try to pick out some of this less larfy material. It's a little bit different than our normal uh, canvas washes, but we're going to see what we can get out of this here. This is also dried material. It's very important to uh, distinguish the difference between washing dry material and wet weight. Um, when you harvest fresh frozen, it still contains the water from the plant so that the, uh, the material is probably gonna be four to five times the amount um, as your dry weight. It is very important to uh, be very gentle with your starting material, no matter what it is. Um, whether that be dry hemp, fresh frozen top buds, the gentler, the better. And as you can see, it's very leafy and dry. So we're probably gonna get a lot of chlorophyll in this wash, no matter how gentle we are. But it doesn't mean that we still can't try to uh, start very gentle on the agitation and then work our way up. And I just gently kind of shake the bag into the vessel here. There might be some trikes stuck to the bag. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the, uh, the hand paddle. I'm gonna saturate this bud down into the water and get it pre-soaking. And I'm also gonna add just a tiny, tiny bit more ice to make sure my temperature is perfect here. I want it right above that freezing point. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more ice. There are four main steps of hash washing. The first is soaking. This saturates the fresh frozen cannabis, exposing the trichomes, not just on the surface of the buds, but also on the interior, making them brittle so that they'll separate from the bud itself and fall into the water. The second stage is agitation, a five to 20 minute washing period on the axis, depending which wash cycle we're on and the quality of our starting material. During this period, the trichomes are detaching from the fresh frozen cannabis flower. We're gonna wash this hemp for around 10 minutes. Then for our third step, is our dwell or settling stage. This allows the trichomes, which are heavier than the water, to sink to the bottom of the vessel and settle underneath the false bottom. The fourth stage is the filtration and recycling of the water. People have a few terms for it, but it's basically collecting everything out of your bubble bags and then recycling water back into your wash, getting ready for your next cycle. Once the hash is collected into the micron bags, it can now be scooped and placed on your parchment lined tray and be ready to freeze dry. It's near impossible actually to, uh, to not have this stuff break up too much on you, but you can try to be as gentle as possible. 
and we really aren't expecting this material to dump trikes like a uh, high quality fresh frozen wood purely because hemp really doesn't have the amount of trikes that a normal cannabis plant has. Once I've got all the material soaked down into the water, what I'm gonna do is actually let this chill for just a few minutes, three to five minutes. I'm just gonna allow this vessel to drop in temperature before we get started on the axis here. So we've got our material pre-soaked and chilled. So now it's ready to use the axis. So what I'm gonna do here is put the vessel pretty much just right under the paddle here. Perfect. And we've got our blue light, which means the paddle is seated into the vessel. One of the safety features of the axis is that when the paddle is raised and you don't have this blue light and the motor is not enabled, there is no way to spin this paddle or get caught in anything. You can't accidentally press a button. This thing won't just start spinning in the air or catching on anything. It has to be completely seated into the vessel, have all con connection points met, have the blue light on, and you have to come over here and actually enable the motor for you to be able to spin anything. So that, yeah, you can't catch anything on accident. You can't accidentally press a button and have it just spinning. It's very important when you're washing um, hemp, really no matter what material you're washing, that you wanna start with as gentle agitation as possible so that you can get the ripe trike heads off of the plant without disturbing the flower too much and essentially introducing chlorophyll into your wash. Um, by starting gently, you can get those ripe trikes without breaking apart the bud, and then you can slowly get to the inner portion of the flower and later washes by getting a little bit more aggressive with it. So if I can dial in an optimal hemp wash, and I'm not sure there is such a thing, we can save that recipe and use it again later. This allows for hash washing consistency, a great feature for high output labs. So what I'm gonna do is press record, and I have 30 seconds to create a recipe that I can then use for future recipes. So we're going nice and gentle on this first one here. You can see my RPM is only at 10. And the joystick ramp speed, the speed in which it changes directions on the paddle is set to slow. So I have a very, very gentle recipe here. So I can actually play this recipe back and it'll create exactly what I just did and recreate it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this uh, pattern here under one of these empty slots. I'm gonna name it. Let's do wash one for this example. I can save it and put it on one of my empty slots here. So now I have a pattern created. To create a recipe, simply press the recipe button, go into an empty slot, and you can edit this recipe. I'm gonna do a two-stage recipe. With my first stage being the pattern that I just created, the wash number one. So I'm gonna select that wash number one, and I'm actually gonna change my time to 10 minutes. So that 30 second recipe, or pattern, is now a 10 minute recipe. You're always gonna finish your recipe with a dwell, and that's just a settle time for the trikes to actually you know, settle to the bottom of your vessel. As you're washing, imagine the trikes like a snow globe. They're all floating around in the vessel. This is gonna allow time for the trikes to settle on the bottom. That way we can you know, push them right through into our hash pump. I'm gonna change this to a two minute dwell can save this and I can name it as well and I'm gonna name this wash one just like our pattern makes everything very easy run start and now we're we're going
So what we're gonna be collecting here is a full spectrum hash, which means we're not gonna be pulling the different micron size screens or anything like that, trying to find different trike heads, sizes, heads, and stuff like that. Um, we're just gonna be using the 220 and the 45, capturing everything in between. The 220 is just gonna keep out all of our large plant material, um, hairs and other things like that. This is where the pneumatic hash pump comes into play. It pours the trichome laden water through micron mesh bags, which filter the trichomes out of the water and collect them at up to 27 gallons a minute. This process gets repeated typically between four and six times. So then this pump is just transferring the water without the hash, the hash is all in the bags. So the water is just being transferred back over into our wash vessel. And we're reusing that because it's already cold and it contains terpenes from the previous washes. So we're gonna try to reintroduce those back into the wash here. All right, so we've collected our hash here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just spraying down the sides, spraying through so that any hash that is in this bag can go on through. And now you can see why we added a 220 bag here. This is collecting all pretty much everything we don't want here. There's plant material, there's pistols. You can actually see all the hairs, the pistols we've pretty much collected here. So this is gonna be garbage, essentially. Um, some people collect this for food grade or whatnot, but most of the time, I'm not even gonna keep this. The 220 is just gonna be trashed. Damn, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> That's awesome. This is a lot better than I thought it was gonna do. So again, I'm just washing down the sides of the bag, ensuring that I got all my hash down in the center. And then I also wanna kind of just rake through it a few times to make sure any chlorophyll that can go through the bag goes through, and that's very important. Again, I'm just gonna take the bag and shimmy a little bit of water out of here. And I'm gonna wait, and wait for this patty to thicken up a little bit. There's still a, uh, way too much water inside. So once this patty starts, starts to thicken, I can go ahead and grab my spoon and start scooping. I like to get it a little bit thick here. so that it can dry evenly in your freeze dryer. If you have a massive clump in there, you're almost gonna get guarantee that there's gonna be ice on the bottom of it when you go to freeze dry. For, for dried hemp, this didn't come out so bad. I've seen a lot worse. Uh, this is actually pretty surprising results. I wasn't expecting it to, uh, to yield much of anything, but this looks great. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on this hemp wash. I know this is very different than the usual high quality fresh frozen washes that we're doing here, but it's always really cool to play around with different material and see the results.